Yeah. The viewers at home, we lived about 500 metres from each other. Oh, wow. Maybe it was in a slightly okay. different decade. It'd be like, okay, so I'm, you know, maybe a couple of years older than him, but that's all right. We'll work on that. Um, now, so tell me what Crescent Wealth is. What, what's your organisation? Well, given him, Mark, uh, Crescent Wealth is a ultra ethical superannuation fund, yeah. which basically invests. Um, our members money, uh, now four and a half thousand of them, in what we like to think is not only ultra-ethical but strictly ultra-ethical investment. Yep. Yep. What does that mean? It means we have black and white screens in terms of what we invest in and what we don't. So describe a screen, I take it a black screen would be um, gambling, alcohol, that sort of stuff. I mean that would be... Absolutely, and we, we add a few more to them. So we've got gambling, al alcohol, tobacco, uh, pornography, uh, financial services and insurance companies. Yeah, right. And so the white screen, what are you looking for in terms of... So you've got a screen, then you have another screen, don't well, you? No, basically it's a negative... When I use the term black and white, it, we, have, you, we have a double negative screen. And so okay. what I mean by that is the first screen is do you operate in these industries? For example, it can be if you're in the tobacco industry or the pornography industry or the alcohol industry, then we don't invest in you on the stock market. Yeah. Once you make it through that, if your main activity is in those areas, you're prohibited. But if you make it through that, then we have a numbers uh, screen. And that screen looks at how risky you are, how much debt you have, yep. um, what your receivables like. Yep. And do the materiality test, just in case you do, you're a retailer, but you own an alcohol shop as part of your, yep. part of your part business. Of your business that, that and it's, if it's below 5%. It's, well, Woolies owns a very big alcohol business, yeah, so huge. they're, they're, they're above point, that 5%. Yeah, your point was the 5%. That's the kicker. 5%, yes. Um, is it hard to find those assets? Well, everybody seems to think that it's super hard. We've done it successfully over the last three years, yeah. and our performance has been competitive with the market and sometimes outperformed the market. And you also do property, is that right? Yes. So, so you, do, you do, it's a two-part um, uh, helping the, the customers with your funds, so you find... Um, ASX listed or exchange listed yes. and then also property as well. Direct property, yep. yeah. Direct property. So in our diversified property fund we have uh, listed companies on Australian Stock Exchange, REITs, yep. who meet the, cr the double criteria yep. and they've done exceptionally well. Exceptionally right. yeah, yeah, well. Of course. Then you've got direct property where we have a, a we've bought recently a property in Melbourne uh, with the National Australia Bank as yeah. one of our funders, they, they a great organisation. Thank you. Um, and uh, this property is a five-year lease, list to one Japanese-listed company, is Sharia compliant because of the nature of the entity that rents it, yep. and uh, we've got Sharia compliant debt on it as well. Yeah, right. Tell me about um, uh, ultra-ethical Sharia investments. Uh, it sounds to me that it's, you know, it's hard enough to work out uh, what to buy and then you put a filter on a filter. Um, yes. Give me an example of what you know, got through that filter if you can. Sure. That that um, that you could talk about and say, look, okay, they're the ones that sort of suit us. Absolutely. Well, in property, um, any property in Australia we can buy yeah. that doesn't have tenants in it, conducting the the, the things that we, we we don't agree with. They don't yeah. agree with our ethical values. Right. Um, and so, so who the tenant is, who the tenant and, and is. how the rent is paid, I take it? Yeah, how the, the rent is paid is okay, it's yeah. just who the tenant is. Yeah, okay. So, you know, if you have a company which has, uh, I don't know, uh, a, a tobacco company, then you're not allowed can't to use it. it. Can't use it. But anybody else outside those filters, you can. Yeah, okay. Um, in terms of companies on the actual stock market, let me give an Australian example, which you, we really like. It's called Vita Group. Yep. It's a uh, communications company. It's Australia's largest uh, Telstra pre premium reseller. Right. And it's up 38% in wow. January. And it's doing really well on the Australian Stock Exchange. Okay. So we really like that company. Another Vita Group. Vita Group. V-I-T-A. V-I-T-A, that's okay. correct. As in the biscuit. As in the biscuit. Not the Vita Wheats, Vita Group. Yep. Vita Group. Okay. The other one is a French technology company called Velio. It's an automotive supplier. And it's, despite the market being down, it's 10% uh, up in recent right. months and it's doing really well and it contributes to the reduction of CO2 emissions by its intuitive driving, its oh, better right. performance and okay. it's a, su a supply company effectively. A supply company Im to the car industry. The, yeah, improving the, uh, the performance of cars around also the ethical issues of CO2. Uh, absolutely and it's almost a technology company in the automotive industry chain. I think that's all we've got time for. I just want to thank Talal Yassine from Thanks, Crescent Mark. Wealth. And, and all the stuff that you're doing with the Ultra uh, 
you know, I think that that ethical story is going to be bigger. NAB is really green in green bonds and Sukuk bonds, so I think that's a great opportunity, and I think you're in the right space. So um, good luck with all that.